You're listening to the New Story Podcast from New Story Church in Kansas City. To learn more about New Story Church, visit our website at www.newstory.church. Welcome, everybody, to the Equip Podcast, equipping you to live out your Christian life as you faithfully love God and love others with truth and grace. My name is Jeremy. I'm one of the pastors here at New Story, and I'm also joined by one of our other pastors. Say hey. What's up? Who are you? I am Pierce. Yeah, you are. And I'm one of the pastors here, (laughs) and I teach. And you teach. Uh, Yes, Pierce is the teaching pastor here at New Story. Glad that you're uh, with me again, because I know, as you like to complain, it's been so long since you've been on here. Um, he's, He's trying to... To say I just never have him on the podcast anymore because I skipped him one time. To I just enjoy our Ashley. time together. <laughs> <laughs> um, My but, feelings were only slightly hurt. Yeah, okay. Um, well, we, we can address that another time. We don't need to do it on air. Uh, well, there is just a couple kind of cultural things we want to talk about. Um, may add another one at the end. I totally forgot about that. We'll see. We'll see. I Yeah, let me put, let me write a note here. Okay. But um, before we get into that, uh, I didn't have it on the call sheet, but you know what time it is. Dude, I thought we weren't going to do it because I didn't see it on there. (laughs) It's time for Riddles with Beers. Okay. This one um, is pretty standard. I have a couple like different styles of of riddles, but this one's a standard riddle. Probably next time we'll get to, if we ever do another podcast. I don't know. We'll see. they're a little bit uh, different, and I like, I like the different ones. But, okay, here we go. A man stands on one side of a river, his dog on the other. The man calls his dog, who immediately crosses the river without getting wet, without using a bridge or a boat. How did the dog do it? The first guy is like he jumped, but that can't be it. It didn't jump. A man was on one side of the river. They're on the same side of the river. His dog is on the other. Never the mind. man calls his dog, who immediately crosses the river without getting wet or using a bridge or a boat. How do you do it? And it wasn't jumping. He didn't jump. He didn't jump. They're on opposite sides of the river. And there's a body of water that's moving between them. Correct. There's a down tree. There is not a bridge or a boat. Well, I guess a down tree is a bridge. Okay. Um Dude, I have no I have no idea. I don't. I don't even know how to begin thinking about this. Besides that there's a dog. On the other side. Tucker's on the other side. My dog, Tucker, yep. Mm-hmm. You're on one side. Mm-hmm. And you say, Tucker, tuck, tuck. Tuck, come tuck. Here. Tuck, tuck, come here. How would he, how would he cross that river without, without getting, getting wet, wet? Without a boat bridge. or a bridge. Dude, I have no Let's idea. Let's say we're in Minnesota. That's supposed to help Maybe me? Canada. Oh, is it frozen? It's frozen. The- I'm an idiot, dude. <laughs> the river is frozen. That is how the dog gets across without getting wet or without a boat or a bridge. There you go. Well, you made it, Tucker. Yep, Tucker made it over. Um, on a, on me and Aubrey, uh, our, our honeymoon, we went out to Colorado, and we were kind of off the beaten path of way out in this, this cabin, which is a really cool place for honeymoon, and it snowed buckets while we were there. So really glad we were thinking about taking our Honda Civic. Really glad we took my truck at that point. And okay. Um, and uh, we we're right next to a river coming down out of the mountains. And I'm like, I, and I mean, we're talking like fresh, fresh water. So I'm like, I want to drink water right out of there. So I go out, the river's frozen. I knock a little hole in the river to be able to dip a cup down. Cause you know, how you like clear, have you ever like cleared snow off and you can see the water underneath? Yes, it's actually really cool. Yeah. So I knocked some out and got it. Aubrey was really worried that I was going to die and be swept away. But Do you remember uh, water it. boy? That's some high quality H2O. H2O. <laughs> Gatorade. <laughs> H2O. That's a, that's a, that, that's an old movie. I've not seen that in forever. <laughs> my, 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 my mama, my mama says. <laughs> My mama says we got a podcast. Classic to do. Adam Sandler. Classic Adam Sandler. Go check that out. Um, or maybe don't. Or or don't. I haven't seen it so long, so I'm not gonna recommend yeah, it. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Um, okay. So a couple couple things happening in our our world. I wanna wanna talk about that. I'm sure you know the direction we're going. Um, obviously, if you looked at the title of this episode, you probably know exactly where we're going. Um, 
but I, I just want to start off with some scripture, and then we will talk about uh, two different two different topics where this this comes into to play. It's First Corinthians thirteen verses one through three. Paul is writing to a church in Corinth, uh, an ancient city in Greece, and he says this, speaking to the church there, if I could speak all the languages of the earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I'd only be a noisy gong or clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy and I understand all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains but didn't love others, I'd be nothing. If I gave everything I had to the poor, and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Pride Month uh, is currently being celebrated in in our culture. Uh, June is relegated as Pride Month um, for uh, any of the uh, that that ascribe to LGBTQ, um, and kind of goes goes on from there. But. Uh, it's honoring the uh, the 1969 Stonewall riots or Stonewall uprising in Manhattan, um, where a, a gay club was broken into or an inn was broken into, um, and and uh, some you know a lot of uh, people from there. You can go read about the Stonewall riots or Stonewall uprising. You're welcome to do that. Get a little history on it. It's always helpful, even if you disagree with something, to understand the history of where it came from. So um, now. As far as Pride Month is concerned, um, I, I want to say something out of the out of the gate here. Um, cl- I, I believe that clarity is a form of kindness, and so I want to be clear on what our stance is as a church, and and kind of what my stance is individually, and I, I you know Pierce as as well, what your stance would be. Um, yeah, and so is this. Yeah. I'm just clear clarifying here. This uh, this is in like our constitution. This is what I wrote as a position statement directly in our constitution that okay. our church voted on and approved. Yeah, before before we read it, I was just yeah. gonna, I was going to say yeah. that. No, that's good. So uh, this is actually. Why don't you read it, Pierce? Yeah, it says sex is a gift designed by God to be enjoyed within the context of marriage between one man and one woman, and serves as a physical reminder of their whole life union. Our sexual desires point to a fundamental longing for intimacy and union with God. But because sin affects all aspects of creation in uh, in ways that we see and don't see, our sexual desires are prone to disorder and misdirection. Due to the effects of sin, we can experience frustration within and alienation from our own bodies. All believers are called to submit to their uh, their sexual desires and sense of self too. Okay, okay. Read that sentence. Dude, yeah, the, it's there's important. some there's some there's some uh, weird markings on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> my my brain my you're dyslexia good, good. is kicking in. Um, all believers are called to submit their sexual desires and sense of self to God, creational intent. We wait in hope for the completion of Christ's redemptive work of our body, soul, and mind. Yeah. And then we have some references on there. If you if you want to read our constitution a little bit more fully, we can link to that link to that below um just so you can uh, it's it's on our it's on our website uh but you know we don't want to ever hide anything like that uh, from from anyone again we believe clarity clarity's form of content um uh, kindness so it, in short here's our position this would be a historical christian sexual ethic um that's that's what we hold to uh, is that we say the way we say it around here is homosexuality is not a sin. Having same sex attraction is not a sin, but homosexual activity is sin. It's outside. Outside. Where? What am I saying? Dude, we're struggling right now. I was bringing two words together. It's outside the boundaries that God has placed around sex that are for our good and for His glory. Um, boundaries, as we read in the Psalms, says boundaries fall in pleasant places for us, Way, places that, that may not be the most convenient for us, but they are for our good and for his glory. And so, in, in short, um, having a, 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 an attraction to the same sex is, is, a, is a, a result of the kind of brokenness in our world and shows kind of the brokenness of our own selves and how sin affects us in ways that we don't see. But that in and of itself is not sin. So like, man, I struggle with that. That's not sin. But activity, choosing to act on that is. Is that that pretty clear? Right. Yeah. And that's the, that's the distinction I think is really helpful to make because a lot of us are probably, we're probably raised, Mm -hmm. think differently. Yeah. Um, and the, but the, the thing that we're going to get to on a second is, um, the difference between homosexuality and heterosexuality Mm -hmm. that like, um, you know, like me lusting after another woman is sin. Yeah. 
you know, and it's like, yeah. it's me acting on that, mm-hmm. that desire. Um, and so that's just like, you know, we, we, we make the distinction, you know, we do that, but then it's like one and the same for this, this act. Yeah. In God's eyes. There, in God's no eyes. Difference. Yeah. 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 Um, and in a culture and like a month like June, for example, it celebrates us. The question is, how can we, um, as, as if you are a Christian and you're listening, you say, Hey, I, 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 you know, I, I stand with the, or I hold to the historical Christian sexual ethic of, of this. I, you know, how can we respond in a healthy way that will not push people further away from God, but honor God and his good design? How can we, excuse me, how can we do that? And instead of us just talking here, um, I want to highlight someone who who is helping, I think, the church do that in a very big way. And it's someone that we've highlighted on this podcast before, um, and I, I want to continually put uh, his, his voice or, or amplify his voice as much as I have the ability to. Um, his name is Peter Volk. Uh, Peter Volk. Uh, he's a follower of Jesus that has same-sex attraction but holds to the historical Christian sexual ethic and has chosen vocational singleness uh, for the glory of God and, and his kingdom. So... Um, He's a, he's a great voice. I will link to his uh, Instagram. I will also uh, in, in the notes below. I'll also link uh, to um, an interview that he did uh, with Justin Gibney on the uh, and campaign podcast, Church Politics Podcast. I'll link to that as well. A great conversation uh, where where he he is pushing us to to ask some really ask ourselves some really good questions. Um, so I'm very thankful for his voice. Um, but I want to read a little bit of his story because this is this is what he you know if you go to his his page this is going to be one of the first things that you see um, and again it's something I've read before but I'll, I want to read it again where he says for nearly a decade I was burdened by crushing shame in large part because I was told gay sexual sin was worse than straight sexual sin sometimes explicitly but ex- I explicitly but often indirectly I was led to believe that whatever sins I committed. They were even more despicable in God's eyes because I was gay. I was worse to look at gay porn than straight porn. Or it was worse to look at gay porn than straight porn. If a guy got handsy with his girlfriend in college, mentor slapped him on the wrist but quipped, well, you're in your 20s, at least you don't have sex. If in, in a time of weakness I got handsy with a guy, mentors treated me like I, could, I had committed adultery and put me on six months leave from Christian leadership. Eventually I was able to give this double standard a name, homophobia. Now that that term is used very broadly by our culture, um, but what he does here is brings out clarity of what this word can actually, or what this word actually means. Um, for uh, if if we're not careful, um, what he's bringing out here is if we're not careful, it's a trap we'll fall into that that gay sexual sin is worse than straight sexual sin, and to do that is homophobia. It's putting an emphasis on something that God himself does not put an over emphasis on. He says sin is sin. There may, may be different consequences this side of eternity, but sin is sin. And I, I want to be very clear on this. Something that, that uh, Pierce was just kind of alluding to is that your sexual, like Pierce, you and me, our, our, sexual, uh, our sexuality is still broken even if we're attracted to the opposite sex. To believe differently is going to result exactly in that and that's brokenness it it would just result in more brokenness your sexuality is still broken even if you're attracted to the opposite sex and i i don't know that many of us think that way no and um because we're like oh you're just fine you know and like but then that's where you see like i think we at least you're you're you know you're liking the right people you know you're you're acting terribly you're starting off on the right foot you know like you know you're not going the right you're going in the right direction yeah and it's like Oh, we don't necessarily look say like with other sins like hey you're going in the right direction you know <laughs> like like let's say if you're like stealing money mm-hmm. well at least you're trying to you know you know save up for your future you know like we don't yeah. like we don't think it in that terms mm-hmm. and it's like um but that's where like you know we were talking to ashley you know she was talking about the organization she's working with and how like they're wanting to also bring her on to like talk about the effects of pornography yeah and it's like um you know that, when we started talking about that it's like um and like when we're thinking through this is like it was starting off with the right foot like even with this like you know like hey like we like we like the opposite sex that's good great but then yeah. and then it's like and so but we don't go feed that with like pornography yeah 
you know, they're like, Hey, get yeah. so much of it. You know, it's, that doesn't help. Yeah. It's, it's not, uh, it, 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 we, we have created a difference there, but in God's eyes, my lust after another woman is no different than, uh, a, a man's lust after another man. Um, and, uh, wh- what? Nothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought, I thought, never mind. <laughs> Do you think I said something different? No, 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 oh. no, 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 no. I have, I was, I was having a thought. I'll have to tell you after. Okay. All right. We can talk later. Um, a little behind the scenes. So um, here, here's what I'd say. I, I want you to go uh, check him out. Uh, make sure you listen to that podcast episode um, with uh, Justin Gibbony from the End Campaign. It's the Church Politics Podcast. It does an episode with Peter Volk. Um, please go go look that up. And Peter is spelled P-I-E-T-E-R. V is in Victor, A-L-K. You can look him up on Instagram. Um, but... And also, we did an episode, uh, a previous episode on Pride Month and the church, uh, you know, ways that we can do better as followers of Jesus in acknowledging our own brokenness and submitting our sinful desires to God's good design for our good, for his glory. Um, you can go listen to that episode as well. I'll link to that below. Um, just so <clears throat> just so you can get a little bit more full picture of maybe how we can, we can navigate this. Um, yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, much of what our world hears, though, when it comes to this, and especially this this month, uh, from Christians, what they're hearing is what Paul describes as noisy gongs or clanging cymbals. And what we end up doing is just virtue signaling to people that already agree with us. Um, we'll post stuff. Um, we'll we'll say things that people already agree with us. They're like, yes, amen. But is that moving the needle in any meaningful way to make this world look more like heaven? Likely not. And so just a word of advice for you. I want you to um, use wisdom and discernment in what you post about and what you share and what you even talk about, the, the words that you use. Avoid avoid sharing things and posting things about taking back the rainbow. Trust me, God's already got that. We don't got to take back nothing. And then uh, other posts, are, oh, I thought pride was a sin or pride is a sin. Like, just relax. Yes, that's true. Yeah, this is another thought. You know, it, like, will you take pride in the Chiefs? Is that a sin? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Sorry, that was the thought. <laughs> no, it's fair. It, it's it, again. That's the double standard thing that we we apply um, when it when it's convenient for us. We don't we don't address it, and when it's not convenient for us or someone's using that in a different way, we'll we'll call it out. But those those type of posts, those type of conversations, those type that type of verbiage does nothing to point people to a God who loves them and wants the best for them. And so our job is to remind them of that. Um, and yes, God's best for them is to submit their desires, whatever their desires are, submit their identity and their desires to a God who loves them and designed them. That is what they're called to do and we're called to do. And we put a lot more emphasis on what they're supposed to do and a lot less on what we're supposed to do and how we're also to be submitting ourselves and our desires to him. So I just want to leave that there. Um, again, a more lengthy episode on that is available. Um, please go check that out. Uh, it's important this this month. So uh, any, any other words or, or thoughts? No. Okay. We're going to throw it to a quick break, and we'll be right back to talk about, uh, yeah, another, another very important uh, and timely subject. So we'll be right back. All right, welcome back, everybody, to the Equip Podcast. Um, unless you live, uh, like I've said many times, with some of these these current issues, unless you live under a rock, uh, you will likely have seen that um, Donald Trump, um, the verdict came down for his uh, hush money trial. And so we'll, I'll, I'll just read really quick what happened, and then we'll just kind of break down some of the response to it and how we can, uh, we can maybe potentially better respond as followers of Jesus. Uh, Donald Trump was convicted on uh, this uh, well last week Thursday for falsifying records to cover up a sex scandal that was that threatened to derail his 2016 presidential can- campaign. Uh, Trump was convicted on all 34 felony counts for falsifying business records by a jury of 12 New Yorkers. The jury found that Mr. Trump had uh, faked records to conceal the purpose of money given to his one-time fixer Michael Cohen. 
Uh, the false records disguised the payments that he made as ordinary legal expenses when, in truth, Mr. Trump was reimbursing Mr. Cohen for the uh, $130,000 hush money deal that uh, Cohen um, struck with the, the porn star Stormy Daniels to silence her account of a sexual liaison with Mr. Trump. His sentencing is now scheduled for July 11th. Uh, each felony count carries with it a sentence of four years that can be served together. So it's not like he's going to get 34 times four, whatever that is. That's not what it is. And as a 77 year old, um, first time offender, uh, he, he, he's not likely to see any prison time He's going to appeal. Um, at best, he would probably, or at, at worst, he would probably get um, a community service. So whatever that looks like for a pres former president. So um, the response to this, uh, it, it, hopefully it's clear, first of all, what, what, what happened here. Um, that uh, Trump, uh, Trump has been married uh, three times and with Melania, his current wife, uh, when while their son either I can't remember if if she was either very pregnant or just with the newborn either way um, he had an affair with um, a, he slept with a porn star by the name of Stormy Daniels they had an ongoing kind of just a, a relationship of him trying to get her on his show the apprentice at, apprentice at the time and other things that that made this come together and so he slept with Stormy Daniels and then when she threatened to voice that or make that known in 2016. Um, again, he did this while Melania is at home, either very pregnant or with a newborn. Uh, just keep that in mind um, when, it, when it comes to this. Uh, he, he asked uh, My Michael Cohen to uh, basically pay off Stormy Daniels because if that came out leading up to, 20, to his uh, presidential election 2016, it could have derailed it. He was worried about that, so he paid hush money, uh, which is not illegal. Uh, which is not illegal, but uh, when you play it off or um, try to conceal some of that as business records um, and falsify documents, that's where the felony comes into play. So that's what that's what happened um, as he was paying Michael Cohen back uh, for that. Um, with kind of a, a stipend to say thank you and to cover up for taxes in the payments um, because it ended up being like $420,000 in total that he ended up paying him um, as, um, uh, for, for, for covering this up. So that, that's what happened. Um, and the jury found him. Uh, they deliberated for like nine, a little over nine hours, came back, unanimous, obviously, decision that he was convicted on all 34 counts. Um, and all 34 counts are each payment that he made to Michael Cohen. Is that that clear? Yeah. Okay. I, I hope so. I'm not a legal analyst. I've done my due diligence to try and understand. I'm not going to speak outside of my purview on like all the legalese and all the stuff that goes with it. Um, I just have to go off of what I'm able to, to learn. Uh, from our, our news, news sources, which I consulted many, many, many different news sources, not just one, because it's very hard to find one that doesn't have a <laughs> some sort of leaning to it. Um, now the response, uh, right afterwards, Trump went out and had a press release where he called this a sham um, and that the real verdict is going to be November 5th uh, by the people, uh, election day, if that's not clear. Um, to to also be clear that uh, if if for some reason he uh, he is sentenced and is put in prison um, or anything like that does not hinder him from running for president. This does not hinder him from running for president, which is interesting. Which is quite interesting. Um, and uh, I mean, he's the first president with uh, a felony, um, or he can be convicted of felonies after um, his presidency. So hmm. um, that we're, we're in uncharted territory here. <laughs> Uh, so no surprise that that's not something that we've we've kind of walked through. But there uh, there was a lot of uh, that was Trump's response. There was a lot of celebrating from people um, on on the right and the left that, that I think that this was deserved um, or that he was absolutely guilty. And uh, so a lot of a lot of celebrating. Although to be completely fair, I don't think that this trial is going to accomplish what many hope is going to it, it would accomplish i feel like a lot of people hope this is going to like kick him out where he's not going to be able yeah. to actually run or yeah. be voted on yeah uh of all the things for this to get him on is not not really going to yield anything beneficial in fact it resulted in him raising over 50 million dollars the next day for his campaign mm. so i i if anything i think we're just gonna people are just gonna double down and it doesn't matter 
Uh, yeah, it almost. Point. I mean, as weird as it sounds, almost like it helped him raise funds. That is the consensus, pretty much. <laughs> which um, is, which is like the bad publicity. Yep. Any publicity is good publicity, <laughs> you know. Yep. And it's like, if it flipped anyone, I mean, maybe maybe that's that's good maybe it's bad i don't know um, yeah and it's like but, well part of the response then is like for because the, there's like people saw this the verdict came through he's like hey it was a sham the real verdict's gonna be coming and so then it's like immediately people are like bought into this like savior complex that mm-hmm. like we have got to do what we can yeah to see this thing through so i'm gonna give money to his campaign yep and that's like kind of like where we're you're going to be getting because this like what we started seeing especially from like the conservative like christian aspect of it a lot of people um really started to do things Mm -hmm. um that were let's just face it yeah kind of out of line yeah a a little bit um and so yeah that was the the response from more uh conservatives and and obviously a lot of christians on on the conservative side um started uh started yeah doing things that were a little little wacky um, but to, to start, I just want to agree, uh, say that I agree that um, there is corruption in our government past, present, and future corruption did not start um, in 2020 um, with, with the election of Joe Biden. Um, corruption has existed long before that um, under every president, and we didn't have four years without corruption from 2016 to 2020. There has been um, corruption past, present, and future. So please know that that I'm coming from a standpoint of agreeing on on that uh, and that uh, some people have gotten better treatment because of that very thing. And some people guilty of some very similar things as Donald Trump have not been convicted because of that. So we can all agree there. But wrong is wrong. And if we want to convict any other person, you have to convict... Well... If you want to convict the other side, you have to be able to call, you know, call balls and strikes and convict your side too. So that's kind of what we're we're looking at. But um, some of the things that were being posted around, uh, one of them, um, it was it was Thursday, uh, it was Thursday, and it was right away. I started seeing it get posted around uh, in the afternoon and evening, and then a lot on Friday. Uh, it was all over Twitter. It was all over Instagram. It was all over Facebook. It was trending at one point. Um, and it was this graphic uh, that said, Jesus was convicted in a sham trial and crucified. I still follow him. What do you read that as? Um, what's happening there? <laughs> well, I, what's happening is that they're making a direct comparison mm-hmm. that as Jesus was walked the life he did and then was ultimately put to death for mm-hmm. our sins, yeah. providing a way for us to follow, mm-hmm. and provided a faith for us to live in, they're drawing a great a, a direct comparison to then Trump is walking the life he's living. He's being persecuted for that. And ultimately he's being crucified in this trial and mm-hmm. that, and I still, yeah, still support him yeah. and we will follow him. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, <clears throat> yeah, there's a, there's a lot, uh, a lot, <laughs> a lot there. Um, and I, I understand that some people may not have realized they were making that correlation, but it is a very clear correlation you are making and you're not i'm not saying they're saying donald trump's a messiah but at the very least you're being flippant with the the death burial and resurrection of jesus at the very least you're being flippant um and uh i i read something uh, following that that i thought was really good and i I just want to read it here for us um and it's just kind of going after one aspect of of this statement um it just says that jesus was not convicted he was declared as not having fault by Pilate and then handed over to death. We find that in Luke 23. To compare the trial of Trump to the trial of Jesus not only reveals the deep lack of understanding of either of these figures, but it is to take Jesus' name in vain. To elevate someone to the same level as Jesus is deeply blasphemous. And Jesus himself would have called this idolatry. When we share memes widely that make comparisons like these, and share pictures of political figures being embraced by Jesus because there was other things going around. Not only do we prove to the world that we simply don't care about our public reputation as followers of Jesus, but we prove to the world that our faith really is tied to political rulers and parties. When we do this, um, I posted about this um, because it was it was pervasive uh, within Christianity, and as much as I can, I want to I want to voice um, uh, that that is not what following that is not what Jesus died for for us to go all in on political figures 
to do. Yeah, that's not what Jesus died for. Um, but when we do this, we're telling our world that we have we have become so preoccupied with saving America that we've forgotten and forsaken the the complete purpose for why we're here in the first place. Why why are we here, Pierce? Yeah, and like like for for real, it's not like an issue of patriotism that like of like the country we live in, mm-hmm. you know, and because like, the whole thing is like why we're here is that like Christ has died for us and given us life, and then like we are to you know to live out the great you know commission is like to mm-hmm. see more disciples and to mm-hmm. spread uh, the the gospel to people and to share allow people to hear the hope that they can have in a new story in Jesus, you know, yeah. like that their life that's, can that's be different. Here. That's, that's like the mission. That's mm-hmm. like that's our mission. And so it's not like when we're co- talking about like America, like we live in America mm-hmm. and like we're grateful that we live here yeah. and we're thankful for the freedoms yeah. we do have. So it's not an issue of patriotism, but it's an issue of priority. Yeah. Where are we placing um, our nation and our politicians on our priority list? Uh, because we can say one thing, but how we act really says what we truly believe. Um, Because I can say, no, dude, Jesus is on the throne. Um, I'm a kingdom person first. But if I'm out here posting things like that or or making these correlations or or sacrificing a ton of influence for political gain, your actions speak a lot louder than your words do. Yeah. And you said something right there about like, you know, like you're sacrificing your influence. Mm -hmm. And it's because, like, if you're going to be like, well, I'll just be a martyr and I'll share mm-hmm. this because this truth, because this truth has got to get out. People yeah. have to hear this. Um, I don't care what happens or, like, what kind of ties you get severed because of that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, so what are you communicating to the people around you that maybe don't agree with you? Yeah. They don't matter. Yeah. That they're not, they're yeah. not worth it. Yeah. Like, the people that this is affecting are not worth it. Yeah. And so then it's like, so they see that and they know you're a Christian, but you mm-hmm. think the po- politics and you know party yeah. is more important than that like i've you know i burnt these bridge they burnt these bridges but they say their god is love yeah and yet they don't yeah. love me and that's the thing um yeah that, that's the thing i we we've talked about this uh before on here um the the same type idea especially around our political series that we did um that we're we're just so quick to sacrifice things on the altar of our our politics and our politicians um and we're showing our our world really who whose we are uh or who we are and whose we are we're communicating a lot to people around us um and if we're not careful i i think when it comes to how much we lift up our politicians and this may be subconscious that we do this we can convince ourselves that a certain candidate is going to bring this this like level of paradise and and kind of christian ethics to our land that can that can only be present present when christ returns it will not come the side of eternity and it can only come when Christ returns. And so uh, we we can convince ourselves of that just even subconsciously. It's like, man, if we just get the right person in, then we'll be okay. Then we'll be headed. We'll be back on track. We'll make America great again. Um, and and, and I, I, just to be clear, I would, I would say the, the same things about Joe Biden if he was being lifted up in Christian circles like Donald Trump is. I would and, say the same or, thing. So this even, isn't a, a political, like partisan thing. Yeah, and like, like we're not trying to like, you know, like, you know, bash down like on this real, real quick. But like, well, here's the thought I just had too. It was like, what if Joe was being put on trial right now, the same exact way? Mm-hmm. Would you be? Would we be calling yeah. it a sham trial? Yeah. No, it's what he deserves. Right. It's what he gets. Yeah. He doesn't. Now the wrong. other side may be saying it's a sham trial, especially if Republicans were in authority and like had the presidency and maybe the House or something like it's that. It's stacked against him. Yeah, exactly. And so then, would yeah. we? Would we? So be what? Ad- what can we trust at any point? Yeah. So we, would we adopt the same thing that Jesus was, you know, convicted? Yep. And it was a sham trial. Mm-hmm. Joe Biden was convicted in a sham trial. Yeah. You know, like that's like this is you got to be consistent. You got to think these things to the logical end. And Um, that I mean, that's like (laughs) 30 seconds of thought, you know, and it's just like Um, and that's painful, you know, to like think through. And especially like sometimes you have like the thorn in your own, like the plank in your own eye when it comes to that. Yeah, we don't uh, often we don't see uh, when, when it's our bias. We don't see our bias because it looks like truth to us. Um 
And so again, I agree that there's corruption in our government, but we have to be consistent in our application of certain things, especially if we're going to say something's corrupt. It's not only corrupt when a certain party's in power. It's corrupt all the time. Um, now you may, yeah, we can go down that lane. Yeah, and but, so what we're, like, we don't want to, like, and like so, like, the question is, like, then why why do we talk about this? Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, because we, like like we said earlier, um, like, we, we love the church. And we serve. We both are pastors. We serve. We serve here. Yeah, and we given love the it. better part of my life to to service in the church. Yeah, I started at yeah. eighteen, so mm-hmm. I've been in ministry now for ten years. Yeah, and um, and like we love it. And but but like Jesus was less concerned with like um, those. Like Paul was like you know he wasn't as concerned with people who weren't believers. Like what was their concerns? It was yeah. those within the church? Yeah, and it was like those... Jesus was less concerned. He was more focused on the people that were saying, "I'm a follower of you. I'm a follower of God. Um, I'm I'm a Christian." Or even the Jewish people that say, "I'm a follower of God." He was more focused on them and less focused on what was happening out out in the world. Um, and so that's going to come out what you know you and I talk about too. It's like this is we're we're looking at Paul, we're looking at Jesus, and saying, "Where was his focus? Where was their focus?" It was on the church. And what they're representing to the world. Yeah. Because like, because again, like what are you communicating if this is, if, if our, the wrong candidate or a weird trial or like all these fill in the blank, some other thing. And if that's our, that's what we're getting a tizzy over. If that's mm-hmm. what all of our focus is on. That's where it's creating anxiety yeah. in us that are like, that's the only thing that it's ever present. It's the only thing we can think about, share yeah. about, talk about, you know, ask yeah. God about. <laughs> You know, like, what is that communicating yeah. to those who aren't within our uh, yeah. with our church? Yeah. And I think like, you wrote here is like, if we can't get our house in order, no one will want to come. Yeah. And so a lot of a lot of our criticism will feel one sided, not not. I want to be very clear, not politically one sided. We can think it's that, but my focus is spiritually one sided. I'm looking at the church and saying, what do we need to do to get our house in order here? What do we need to do? to show people the love of Jesus and so they can know the truth of Jesus. Like what, what do we, what, that's going to be, that's going to be my focal point. Yeah. And that's like what our series was. We want to live in the way of Jesus with the heart of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it's like pair those things together because we believe in Jesus and his truth and his power to save. And like we attest to that and, Mm -hmm. and we want to see people be more like him. We want to grow in Christ likeness. And part of that is like, we need to acknowledge what is going on in our hearts. And primarily like we need to see like we're, our eyes are elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, something I just just thought of off the dome here. Um, something we say all the time around here, and something that we all know to be true, is that um, we need to like people need to know that you care before they care what you have to say. Um, why would that be any different with God? Like we have an opportunity to show people that He cares about them before they get to the point of really caring what He has to say about their life. If we can show them that he actually cares about them and loves them right where they're at. And that can lead them toward the truth. That's what we try to do in our lives genuinely. Like if I'm just leading with, with condemnation and truth and I just like, I don't have a relationship with you, Pearson. I just come at you real hot and, and like, Hey, you're, you're doing this wrong or whatever it may be. I'm throwing a bunch of stuff at you. Uh, you need to know that I care about you before you care what I have to say. Yeah, and and people, I think a lot of it goes the same way with, yeah, with and I how think we're people, representing Jesus. Yeah, for sure. And I think people like with, um, you know, if they don't feel love from God's people, mm-hmm. however backward this feels, they're mm-hmm. not going to feel loved by God. Yeah. And it's like, because again, what kind of love are you communicating mm-hmm. as a believer yeah. to someone who's not a believer? And if you don't love them, yeah. then like, what are we talking about? Yeah. So th- this is uh, these these type of things of of like uh, Jesus was convicted in shame trial crucified and I still follow him stuff like posts like that uh, that is that is part and parcel um, Christian nationalism and as as a church and as pastors um, and as Christians we should want to separate ourselves from that type of rhetoric and from that type of Christianity because that's not um, the type of of Christianity that Jesus modeled that early church modeled. Um, and when we can continually separate ourselves from that and say, hey, that is not the way of Jesus. Sure, these people are trying to do good, and I'm not saying they're not Christians. 
but that's not the way of Jesus. These are not the priorities of the kingdom. When we do that, we are more we are being more faithful to God and it'll allow us to get greater influence with those that are also far from God that see the issues in that. And you may respond and say, well, you know, Jeremy, we're not, we don't need to gain the respect of God. We don't need to uh, um, be loved by the world. That's not, that's not our goal. I agree. That's not necessarily our goal. But very clearly, I mean, we've talked about it in, in um, uh, many times. The scripture tells us to be careful in how we interact with people so that we gain the respect of outsiders. And I think for a long time, it has been a badge of honor to just be hated by the world. It's like, look, man, they're, they're coming at me online. I posted this thing. Look at the comments. All, all, they're all triggered and they're all upset. It's just a kind of a badge of honor for Christians, it seems like. Listen, Jesus said that's going to be our reality. That because of me, because of Jesus, they're not going to love you. You're going to be hated by the world. That's going to be the reality, but that doesn't mean we go out of our way to make it easier for the world to hate us. May they, I would rather they look to Jesus and say, no, I want nothing of that. than look to me and say, man, that guy, <laughs> I, I don't want, I, that guy's kind of putting me off. I would rather they look and say, he's modeling Jesus and I don't like that rather than just like, I don't like him. Um, so at the end of the day, uh, eternally, this is such a small thing. Like this is such a small thing, guys, a trial, um, whether it's, whether you're sitting here feeling a sense of schadenfreude for conservatives where you're like, oh man, I'm so stoked. They finally got what they deserve. They finally got like, whether you're celebrating or you are, are, are just, ticked off and doubling down and doubling down listen we should not allow this to consume our thoughts we should not allow this to control our emotions and direct our emotions or even dull our hope in what jesus will bring because no one the side of eternity is going to bring that into a reality so just please keep that in mind um, and w- one last thing on this, because it's it's right in line with this, and it just came out, <laughs> like literally just came out, and maybe we can get ahead of it. And here here's my hope. Uh, well, there's a song that came out called "The Chosen One" by Natasha Owens. She is um, a, a a patriotic um, singer. Um, she sang at CPAC this year. Uh, she uh, she she does she does a lot. She's got a couple albums. Um, and very, very patriotic, very laden with Christian language. And she came out with a new song, and I'm hoping it's satire, but based on everything else I'm seeing, it's... And watching the video, like we not, just watched, I just watched it for the first time an hour yeah. ago, and uh, yeah. it does not look like that. Yeah. But here, let me, can I can I start reading it? Yeah, the, the video is just all um, like clips of Trump and interacting with people and stuff like that. That's so, and it's, it's called The Chosen One, and... If you didn't have the video in front of you, I would highly recommend watching it with the video, yeah. not just listen to it. Natasha so, Owens. So you can see the actual like thrust of the, like. I would say I would link to this, but I don't know if I want to link to this in the show notes. Ah, people can look it up. Yeah. It'll be all right. Yeah. But here's, here's okay. the first verse. Read, read the first verse for us. I'm not saying he's something divine. He gets in trouble bigly time after time. He's controversial, but one thing is true. Imperfect people, a perfect God can use. Now, to be very clear, and she explicitly says, this isn't a double entendre. She ain't talking about Jesus. She's talking about Donald Trump. And she said, I'm, I'm, I'm standing with Donald Trump. She said this on her thing. So just to be clear, this isn't like us reading in some script. She's very clear about this. Go ahead and read. Uh, it goes into the chorus from there. I'm standing with the chosen one. Ain't no stopping what the Lord began. He's only human like you and me. Just the chosen one, the chosen one. Oh man, <laughs> dude! I know. Um, again, we. <laughs> it sounds like we're reading into this. We are not. She's made it explicitly clear who she's talking about. Um, who is the chosen one? Go ahead and read verse two. This great nation is under attack, and its real leader has arrows in his back. <clears throat> so many greet him with a Judas kiss. But God gave us a warrior for such a time as this. Yeah. <laughs> um, so many greet him with a Judas kiss. Where does that Where does that come from? It talks about like when um, when Judas betrays to, yeah. Jesus, 
And so they, they say, hey, the one I go kiss. Yeah, that's, Judas says that. Yeah, Judas. Yeah. Because like, remember, G- Jesus, like, and he wasn't like this like super handsome guy. Like uh, everyone he picked like him out of crowd. He just looked like a Jewish guy, <laughs> like a normal guy. So yeah. Judas went to the Roman officials and said, hey, when I go kiss this guy's hand, that's the guy you need to take and arrest. Mm-hmm. And so then he goes and does that and he portrays Jesus. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's again, making a direct correlation that there's so many people within... Um, uh, America and within uh, the kind of the political realm that greet uh, Trump with a Judas kiss. They're like, I'm actually trying to show you I'm on my side and I care about you, but I'm going to betray you. That's that's the idea behind this. And then it goes back into the chorus. Mm-hmm. And it comes out of that. I'm standing with the chosen one. Yeah, cha- yeah, just the chosen one, the chosen one. goes in the bridge and says, yep. brothers and sisters, lay down your stones. Mm-hmm. There's only one God and he's still on the throne. Mm-hmm. Which... Yes. Very true. That's that's true. He is on the um, throw. But I, I feel like this is a um I'm I'm ladening this, like dripping it with Christian language and Jesus language to to make the sound a little bit better than it does. It's like, yeah, there's only one God and he's still on the throne. So who's the chosen one? The one that's on the throne. Not the one that's in the Oval Office. Right, yeah. And like like listen, like we're sorry. We're not is it, it, it <laughs> has world? so much Christian language yeah. to it and it's like mm-hmm. the scriptures and like we wanted to that we're running out of time. But yeah. like to go through and like say, here, this is where this Bible verse comes from. This yeah. is where the Bible verse comes from. But we have to remember who she's talking about. Yeah. The other the only other here, like the there's only one God and he's still on the throne. That's the very last line on this page. Mm-hmm. Everything else is in reference to Donald Trump. Yeah. And like there's lines uh, yeah. in here that we can agree with. Like mm-hmm. imperfect people, a perfect God can use. Absolutely. A hundred percent. You me. see that That's all me. over the place. Yeah. Um, but then it's talking about like the state of our country and the arrows in his back. And like mm-hmm. and like and so it's just like yeah. who is he talking about? And yeah. this is like and like here's a question you have because I don't have to go soon but it says is this really what Jesus had in mind as he hung on the cross and gave his life for the church yeah that people because uh, I'm is this sure, really what he had in mind that and I'm sure people this music? Are, oh yeah and I'm sure people are going to adopt this because I just like real quick right before we film this podcast I started seeing like I just I, I searched the video and it's like the first thing on my feed mm-hmm. and uh, and people saying go listen to this right away mm. and I just I I hope it's not satire. I think we can just say that it is. We can yeah. maybe like. I'm just trying to hedge my bets and just holding out fingers crossed hope. There's no she's way. She's like, oh, this is all an act. It and there's no way mm-hmm. that it's like they're yeah. like it's not done in response yeah. to the trial because they knew the trial was uh, coming. Well, she. I mean, the fact that it's all recorded, she would have had to do that over the weekend. My guess is that she, she probably had, this had in it the, in the hopper, um, ready to go yeah. for when the verdict came out. Yeah, potentially. Yeah. Uh, but like even the language of the chosen one, what does Messiah mean? The anointed one of Israel, the chosen one of Israel. That's what Messiah means. And there's only one Messiah. There's only one chosen one. And when you're making the claim. Yeah, I'm not ta- saying, saying he's something divine, but you are. But then the rest of the language sounds, um, yeah, it, it's just, yeah, it's just very uh, laden with with religious language to try and make it sound better. But keep in mind, like the church existed before this nation; it will exist after. Jesus will be on the throne before he was on the throne before this this nation. He'll be on the throne after this nation. He is king, even if we want another. Let me let me end with John 19. <clears throat> Um, this is uh, back to um, kind of where when Jesus is is standing before Pilate, standing with Pilate, and Pilate's not really sure what to do. Uh, and uh, he said, when Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus. Uh, this is John 19, verse, uh, sorry, John 19, verse 13. There it is. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out, sat down the judge's uh, judge's seat at a place known as the stone pavement. Um, it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about noon. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews as they're all standing out there. But they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. And Pilate said, shall I crucify your king? And they answered, we have no king but Caesar. Ooh. We have no king but Caesar. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. What are we shouting for? What are we shouting for? Um, what are we What are we fighting for here? And could we, 
when we are making direct correlations to Jesus and 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 any political figure, fill in the blank. It's not just Donald Trump. In this case, it is, but fill in the blank. We ha- we are saying we have no king but Caesar because we are putting someone else on a pedestal here that we should not be. Okay. Any anything else that you want to add to that? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, I know there's a lot, uh, but I as always want to thank you for joining us uh there's going to be a bunch of links down the show notes please go check those out um and uh and i hope that this has been a helpful episode just learning uh, how to look at stuff a little differently think through stuff a little differently and most of all um we hope that it is equipping you to live out your christian life as you faithfully love god and love others with truth and grace so church let's go do it